My name is um, Bernd Eisemann from the Munich Re company, also one of the German delegates. And I'm very pleased um, to be here and I uh, brought with me another standard. So we have seen now so many standards and actually two use cases because we are already assessing AI systems and therefore I brought you two concrete use cases we have been doing. So um, as a quick overview, who is Munich Re? I don't know who actually knows it. We are one of the largest reinsurance companies in the world. I just brought some brands you might recognize or not recognize. So we are a reinsurance company. We also are a primary insurance company, especially in Germany, but also worldwide. And we also have a huge um, asset management company where we actually host all the money where the clients are investing in their insurance products. So, so much for Munich Re worldwide. And now you are most likely asking why are we concerned about AI? So why an insurance company? And I brought you some examples from the past where insurance companies actually enabled new technology. That started like 500 years ago. So international sea shipping would not have been possible without insurance companies. It was when Lloyd's was founded because nobody could take the risk on their own to lose one of these ships. So basically insurance companies enabled these new technologies to be able to, to function. And this now comes to new te technologies that are much newer like windmills or what we have also heard in the last two days, autonomic driving. So um, there will be no self-driving cars on the street, never ever if there's no insurance for them. So therefore it is very important for insurance companies to understand these risks. I have two more examples, solar panels or batteries. So the same with the batteries in the cars, we are already insuring the lifetime. So basically saying they will function 20 years. And so you understand now why, why we need to understand AI, the risks out of it, and why we also come up with own standards. For example, um, the, for shipping in marine industry, the standards by then, this is a long time ago, have been set by the insurance um, industry. So, And on the last picture, you have now AI, and that is why I am here. And I really like this conference very much because here you don't have to talk about risks of AI. I always usually have to do this, so I will skip this slide and come right to our own standard we have um, developed for an assessment of AI. So it's basically, it's called, when we named it, we named it um, CERT AI. We also founded a subsidiary. It's going to be an own company, um, CERT AI company. And on the left side, um, what we have done is basically we took whatever we could found in the market right now. So there are the Fraunhofer publications. There are all these publications you have heard about in the last um, two days, the EU Act, like I don't have to list them for you. And basically we took the best out of it. We, we screened them all and we said, okay, this is how we see the risk. And this is how we see the mitigation and what we would expect as a mitigation and as a standard um, for AI. We, we put them into a framework, um, made an, an audit catalog out of it, um, hundreds in, of questions where we, where we asked, did you do this, did you do that? Basically to get a feeling if the AI is, um, is good or good enough, I mean, I, as nobody else, we cannot say it's 100%, uh, no way, and we can also not do this for high-risk um, areas, um, obviously not. But it's a, it's a start to have a, a standard and, a, and an actionable catalog, an audit catalog that really you can, you can do something um, with it. And um, if you do this, if you have now your AI application and you run through our assessment, you do get an assessment report. It's basically um, saying, okay, this is, this is good. Um, this is um, here you can improve, there you should improve. And basically whatever your intention was with the AI is fulfilled or not fulfilled. And we are currently working on um, a quality seal. You can stick on your web page or wherever you basically, where we say, okay, this kind of like guarantees 
our standards. So this is um, um, derived, obviously, from the standards currently being developed, but it's, it's our house, or house own um, standard with the name of CERT AI. Um, who is um, we or who is actually standing behind that? Um, we are three large um, organizations, or two large and one not so large. <laughs> so it's um, Munich Re, we are the experts in risk management, so we really understand what can go wrong. <laughs> Then we have um, Fraunhofer on board who are um, leaders in AI research, so they support the initiative very much with their expertise in Zertifizierte KI, if you have already heard, and in AI. And we have a company out of Switzerland, CertX, that is a standardization um, company, and they bring in all the knowledge and how to do assessments, how to do product safety assessments, how to do all, all these calculations around, and they are the experts in their field. And you, um, at the bottom still, um, soon to come, we are publishing a quality seal. It's not a certification because the ISO standards and so on are still under development, but it's a quality seal against our own um, standard. And what are we looking on? I mean, you know, I've seen them so many times now, I'll flip um, through them, these dimensions. But here, I will stop because I will tell you now from a practical perspective what we did um, with our first clients. So they come in with a, with a certain problem or a certain quality statement they want to be verified. And um, we have to check, obviously, first in, in assessments or in talks, you know, in which context is the AI being used. And no, we can obviously not um, assess self-driving cars, so it needs to be a use case that is not safety critical. It, it needs to fit currently into within our um, standard. And um, once we have done that, we do a rough risk assessment. We, we check, okay, where are the risks coming from? Where are the areas? Is this rather going into fairness, um, bias? Is it going to robustness, transparency? So we have a set of, um, a catalog of questions where we, we have a structured process on how we do this. And another very practical um, problem is always um, where, where exactly is the AI, where does it start, where does it end, um, you have three models, you have models in sequence and so on. So we also have a, have a process now in place where we say, okay, this is what we do look, look at and this is what we do not look at. Yeah. And that is in, in, in practical life, it's quite, quite, quite complex. Then we look at um, processes, organization roles. So these are uh, typical uh, first assessments around, okay, um, do you have the right people, the right processes, are you risk aware, and so on. So um, this is the first set of questions we ask. Then we ask many more questions in, for these dimensions. You all know them. And later on, and that is very important, we have, um, as we, um, we insure satellites, we insure planes, we insure submarines, everything. So for each of, of these domains, we have experts, risk experts, and we can later on interpret, for example, is 80% occurrence enough or not enough? And you all know for some use cases it's enough, for some it's obviously not enough. This is the, the approach. Everyone then asks, okay, how deep does it go? And, and yes, we, we dig into the details. So we ask around the models, the data, how did you do this? Um, which, how did you do your model um, selection? Why did you do it this way? Um, how did you do your pre-processing? So it goes to a certain um, depth. It's, it's much more than pure process questions. It obviously, I've seen a lot of these posters up there. At some point, it also ends. Yeah, these posters they dig in in real, real um, problems and the very, very depth of the assessment. At some point, stops. But it's much more than a pure process audit. And um, in certain areas, we dig quite deep. Now, the two use cases I brought along. The first one, it's um, a startup company. And what they do is they, they 
can technical drawings, and which I didn't know before, technical drawings on a worldwide basis, everyone draws it differently, so they scan these drawings in and make a machine-readable format um, out of it, and it's quite complex because everyone, as I said, does it differently, and they, they sell basically the service, the scan service, and the transfer service into an electronic format. And their challenge was that their clients didn't really trust. And now we are back to this uh, trust. Do you trust the AI? Because if you are a client and you change all your processes away from manual to, to automatic, you really want to trust that it works. Because if you, if you release um, five people or move them somewhere else, and then half a year later doesn't work anymore, you are in trouble. So basically, the, the first one, does it work as intended? Yeah, that was the first um, challenge. Um, the second one is the data protection um, fulfilled. Um, and basically, their clients also wanted to know that a, the development of the AI was really done state of the art. So we came in and we used our assessment to really check first all the, the processes, is it really done state of the art as you would currently do it, you know, basically something like you, you, you can't really do it much, much better at the moment, I mean, we can always do it better, but not much better. And um, we also confirmed later on that to best of our knowledge and our assessment, we can also we can basically confirm as a third party, we can confirm the assessment of that startup company because the startup company says we reach whatever level, 90%, and um, we could also confirm that, I mean, we are not, I mean, we all know there are sometimes there could be a 100 and a 1, a 0%, but it's basically um, within all the levels of uncertainty, but um, we confirmed as a second or third party, we said, yes, they are right, and they could write this on their on their sales um, presentations, on their homepage, and basically it, it helped them a lot to build the trust and, and actually to sell, sell the software. And also we confirmed the data protection that none of the um, IP is being stolen if, if the data is processed. So the, the output was, again, a management report, and as the seal is not available yet, um, no seal at that point, but I uh, hope it will come soon. And the second use case, it's coming from the insurance um, industry. So it's a large insurance company in the healthcare sector. They are processing incoming invoices. Invoices are coming in from the clients. They are processed and basically paid out completely um, automatically. So, and again, this is a it's a very new way of doing it, and the business, the, the trust out of the business is still not, not so 100%. So the head of AI had to explain many, many times, you know, is it secure, can we do it? And, and now the question that came up were like, so um, is there unconscious bias there? Are we, are we biasing people? Yeah. Um, what happens if um, data changes in real life? Is it still okay? Because we run it completely in a dark processing, so nobody really looks at it anymore, and people don't really feel, feel good about it. And um, also for the human interaction, so for example, will really a human take over? Does it really work? Or another very important question was if, if the AI says, I'm not so 100% sure, i will rather give it to a human, are you not at the same time influencing this human? Because if you look later on it, you would say, oh, the AI said something is wrong, so i rather double or triple check it. Yeah. So a lot of these questions, um, currently uh, we see them rather in the financial HR area. I mean, we have seen presentations around bias and so on, but... Um, we don't see the questions right now in manufacturing, but rather like finance companies, but they are now asked, being asked more and more and more. Um, we have also run this through our assessment, um, and before I come to the next slide, so it's very important again to say the use case is important. Yeah, you can see this in the box down there. 
Um, obviously, if you do it blind processing in an in a email routing, it's, it's not as important if there are faults. Then you do it in, in claims management as, as it was here, so it's another level. And obviously, if you do it later on in a medical treatment recommendation, you need completely other, other levels. And therefore, our, our first, we really check the risks first, yeah, and then basically can say, okay, we can assess this or not and can really give our okay to it. Yeah. So the same thing came out of here. So we, we wrote a management report and the, the head of AI was then able to show to their business and again said, okay, it was a, a third party assessment coming to the same reach and we could also confirm that um, the data being used is in line with the regulations of insurance companies. So um, the reason for that is that now, in, at least I can talk for the financial business, auditors are now starting asking these questions. So um, are you ensuring that the AI works and, and are you ensuring it's not discriminating and so on? So these questions are now coming. So actually, Munich Re itself, we are being asked by the investors and uh, these ESG questions and so on. So these questions are coming and um, we could um, confirm and say yes, from our point of view, with, with our standard as, uh, as we see it, um, we can confirm. Yeah, so. This were the two um, use cases. Um, last slide, just as a head up, so we are working on these two um, quality seals um, up to come. They are still, you can see they are gray, but we want to um, give a quality seal for the processes and for an assessment at a later stage, maybe in one or two months. So thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Frankly, I've been really impressed by the quality and uh, effort made by all the presenters of this afternoon. Yours, of course, included. Excellent, excellent presentation. I think we are, it's really impressive what we are doing on a very difficult subject. But we are making progress. I don't have a question, but I think that... You, but I, I think that you should be involved somehow in the groups of uh, GTC21 because what we are doing is very relevant for you and yes. reciprocally. Yes. So, so I don't know when Patrick will tell us how, but I hope that you will, you will be involved somehow later on. Thank you, and I've also been impressed by the last two days. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.